So today's video is to see how we can use artificial intelligence to help us with design. And by design, I'm talking about actual logo design, brand design, website design. The results from this are not immediately usable, but with the help and support of an actual designer, I think that this could go a long way. For artists and designers, I think that this is a great way to explore ideas. I think you can generate literally thousands of ideas just from a few prompts, and you can use that as a foundation to get started. For clients, I think it's a good way to sort of explore a direction that could be interesting for you, and then you pass that on to a designer. None of this is immediately useful, but I think it's a great, great way in which you can get started with visualizing your brand, your website, your business cards, or your logo. Let's get started. So this is how I went about it. The first thing that I did was to tell ChatGPT what kind of business I'm trying to start. And in this case, I told it that I wanted to start a consultancy business that was focusing on Web3, artificial intelligence, blockchain, etc. And I asked it to, to describe for me what a logo for a company like that could look like. And so it's telling me that the logo will depend on the branding and images, but then it gives a few suggestions. Simple, modern, clean lines, limited color palette, shades of blue, green, or purple to represent technology, and then some sort of abstract or futuristic design that incorporates elements of artificial intelligence, and then elements from Web3 or blockchain such as cryptographic symbols or hexagonal shapes. This is pretty accurate. A lot of this is very generic, but I think it's a good jumping off point for visualizing what you are looking for. And so I told it to combine options two and three and use pastel colors so that it could be more muted. Um, and so it says that a logo that combines elements of abstract design with elements from Web3 or blockchain and uses pastel colors could look like this. And then it goes ahead to describe that the central element of the logo could be abstract or geometric, like a triangle hexagon. Um, and then it describes the colors. And then later on, it talks about the, how you focus on the technology, such as cryptographic symbols, lines of code, etc. Um, so I think this was really helpful. But then what I wanted to do next was to just reduce it to nouns because this is how the description is simplified. So instead of pasting a long block of text into mid-journey, I just kept that nouns. And it gave some, you know, um, pretty good summary. Geometric shapes, triangular, hexagon, pastel shades, uh, blue, small shapes, etc. So it basically reduced it to the descriptors of the logo that I was looking for. And so now the next step was to get that and plug it into Mid Journey and see what Mid Journey gives us. So imagine and then just dump all of that. There you go. So that's the entire thing. And then um, edited that just a little bit and then added and told it explicitly to use version 4 because the outputs are much better. And then give me an aspect ratio of one to one, which is you know more square. So most logos generally tend to be square. So it takes some time doing that. And then I also wanted to get the entire block without the reduction to just nouns. I wanted to get that entire block and then paste it as well and see what the difference is in terms of what mid journey generates for the two. So the first images are coming out. That looks pretty interesting so far. 62% uh, rendered. Let's see what the 100% looks like. Okay, I think that's done. Okay, that looks interesting. I'm not particularly excited by it, but again, it's generated a logo. And so now you can keep doing this over and over again, but it's basically given you a logo that you can try to play with. So then I decided to use the full block of text and see what it would give me. Now, again, you can keep doing this over and over again until you find something that's useful. But the, the, basically the idea of visualizing or thinking or sketching can be reduced to just a few prompts. And this could be a good starting off point uh, for you to develop a logo or a brand. And you'll see how it gets a little bit more sophisticated later. Okay, tweaking that, looking for things that should not be there. 
but just sort of to give it better context and semantics. Um, and there's a whole bunch that is an unnecessary descriptor, so reduce it to that. Give it the version four and the aspect ratio, and then see what it does. All right, so I'll speed this up a little so that we're not sitting around waiting for it to, to render. Also, for some of these, the waiting time has been reduced. I've basically just skipped over the waiting time, so you'll find that it's jumping from like zero to 60 or 70 percent. Okay, so this is uh, rendering. Okay, I like that so far. Like, oh, okay. Okay, I, I like the the bottom left sorry the bottom right i really like that the rest is too chaotic for me but that bottom right looks fantastic um yeah that one um so you compare the two uh, this one uses a bit of text elements um this one doesn't the interesting thing about mid journey is that it actually doesn't render text very well it will look like text but it will not be text it will not be legible so then I asked you to give me variations on that, that one that I like. It hasn't really given me anything different, just a slight change in hues and colors, but that's okay. I like this logo well enough. Yeah, so you see what I mean? Like the text looks like text. Um, that, okay. So it, it is text, but it's gibberish. Um, okay, so I like that. I, I, I like that. And I think that as an artist, I can play with that a little bit more. So next step was to ask it what a website for that consultancy could look like. And so it spat out a description that I think was pretty generic, but good enough to like plug into something. And you see, that's the thing that I'm discovering about um, uh, ChatGPT is that it's very high level descriptors. Of course, you can jump deeper. You can go deeper if you choose to ask it very specific questions. But this is sort of the generic advice that a typical designer would give you. They'll tell you, oh, you need a call to action, which, which, which people click like a contact us. They'll tell you that you need a blog or a news section. They'll tell you your messaging needs to be clear and concise. They'll tell you you need a contact form or a live chat feature. And these are just general initial stages of designing a website. The details, of course, require um, a lot more sophisticated design, interaction design, uh, user experience design, and things like that. But if you want to explore what the initial stages could look like, I think this is a fantastic way of doing it. So then I asked it to simplify this because I was like, okay, I can't plug that wall of text into, into mid journey. And so I asked it to simplify it and it's giving a pretty decent summary of the entire thing in one wall of text. Um, so then we can copy that, take that into mid journey, ask it to reimagine that and let's see what the results look like. Blah, 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 blah. So I just, I'm not just removing a lot of redundant words as always. Telling it to use version four and give me a three to two aspect ratio, which is basically the sort of widescreen aspect ratio. I realize that uh, version four doesn't do more abstract aspect ratios, but I'll explore that a little bit later. Cause I wanted a four to three, but I was like, okay, um, last time I tried that, it gave me an error. All right, that's looking interesting so far. 31% rendered, 93%. So I copied that because I think I wanted to make, because uh, I wanted to make some modifications. Okay, so that looks fully rendered. Let's see. Oh yeah, so I wanted to specify the colors in this case uh, to match the logo. So I wanted green, blue, purple, and white. Let's see what that looks like. So that is actually a really interesting mock-up for a website, for a technology consultancy website. So we decided to switch it out to the colors of the logo, the green, blue, and purple, and white. And so now there's a little bit more dynamic colors to that. So everything we are seeing is generated by mid-journey from the humans to the layouts to all that. 
I'm not a fan of how bright the colors are, um, but I think it's a really relatively usable early prompt for a designer to present to a, to a client, for example, asking them, is this, is this a direction that would work for you? Um, so then use pastel colors. So pastel colors are more muted. They're basically less harsh, um, less bright. They are, they look a lot more reserved and they're, I, I really love them personally. So they basically, basically gets every single color that you have and then sort of reduces the hue and the, and the saturation just a bit. All right, so you see these colors are a little kinder to the eyes. I'm not seeing a lot of purples, um, so maybe it's decided to ignore them, but that's a decent mock-up. Um, of course, as a designer, I'm looking at it and, and seeing that there are so many things that could be improved, but that's a decent mock-up. That's almost like a, 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 a wireframe, like a color wireframe that you can present to a client and the client can say, yeah, I, I generally like this. I generally like the placement of these elements. Let's proceed with this. So then I think I went back and decided to give it the full wall of text that I'd ignored earlier. Um, so let's see what it comes up with that. Let's see how it imagines that. Decided to also give it the primary colors. Again, blue, white, green. Give it version number. And then that specific aspect ratio. I don't know why I did a one-to-one, -one. that doesn't make sense. Because you need white instead of square. Um, so yeah, it's given me another version. It's not using any of my colors, uh, but that actually looks better than the previous models. Um, I think that looks better than this, because this was a little dark. Uh, and so then I asked it to upscale the logo. So it gives me like a higher resolution and then I asked it to upscale a whole bunch of the other the other visualizations as well. So right now it's I'm just asking it for larger, more detailed versions. So as you can see, perfectly usable wireframe, everything generated by artificial intelligence. The people, the backgrounds, you look at those stupid legs, um, but everything that you see is generated by the AI. That also looks very interesting. Some of this is actually things that in my history as a designer, I could use this as a starting off point. Um, so generally that, that initial section allows us to, to create like this sort of very, very early stage exploration of a design. Um, obviously as a designer, you'd add a little bit of your experience, your nuances, your context, your understanding of web design, your understanding of brand development, your understanding of logo design, ETC. And as a client, it allows you to very, very quickly say, okay, I like this direction. I like ABCD. Can we mix a little bit of this, a little bit of that? Um, so after this, I want to show you a little bit more of the other experiments that I was doing. Uh, specifically around logo design. So this was a logo for a design house, a design studio. So I asked you to imagine a logo that was sort of abstract, that had brushes and pens. And some of these are really interesting. They're not, they're not like incredible. Um, they, they're, they're not really well thought out like a designer would, but it's a starting point. Um, and for a lot of people, it would be the kind of thing where someone says, yes, yes, I like that. Can we proceed with that direction, right? So imagine as a designer reducing your mock-up and concept time from like days into minutes because this entire video was shot over the space of, um, this entire video was recorded over the space of like 45 minutes. So everything that I've done that you've seen was a 45 minute process. And in that time I got logos, I got website mockups, I got business cards, and it's just incredible. Uh, so let's take a look at others. So these were some earlier designs. Um, I love this. I don't know where it got the gold from, but this was, I think this was a technology, a personal consultancy. And then earlier on I was playing with like salons and this is where it was really interesting. Um, but let's look at that. So this was a logo for a software company. 
I just gave it software company and it came up with its own visualization of that, which was really abstract. But some of those are interesting um, for, for further exploration. I love the, the hexagonal design. I love the brain thing, um, really, really interesting. The one that I really liked though was this exploration for a tourism company. I asked it to imagine um, a tourism company logo with like an elephant and palm trees and a few other things. And it came up with this, I, this I absolutely love. Like I would actually refine any one of those and use it as a logo. They look incredible. I think this would be perfect for like a safari company. Um, so the prompt there was a tourism development company includes sandy beaches, palm trees, and an elephant. Very, very simple. And then the next that I really liked was the salon because um, I visualized as a friend of mine owns a salon. And so I think at that time, my mind was on the salons. Um, yeah, so I like this. And one thing that I wanted to make a distinction for for this was that I wanted salons that could give us like an African hairstyle thing and then another that it could give us like a more um, Caucasian hairstyle thing. And so I gave it specific descriptors um about ha hairstyles and so this was its result for a specific color palette with um african hairstyles obviously it's crazy but it's a logo i love them i would use them and then these were the more um caucasian hairstyles and so for this i i, th I think i said american hairstyles with shades of pink and blue and that's what it spat out So then I asked it, what would the website look like? And these are actually mock-ups of those websites. So I'm going to upscale a few of these just so that we can look at the higher resolution versions later. Uh, then I asked it for business cards and I kid you not, I, I like these business cards. They're a little too bright for my, for, my, for my taste, but I think again, as a sort of beginning stage, as a sort of, um, visualization stage. I think this is a really interesting place to start from. I'm not sure that I'd put massive heads on business cards like that, but again, if you show it to a client and the client likes it, it's a good start. And so to wrap this up, I decided to explore one more sector, which is auto vehicle garage. So I asked it to create a logo for um, a motor vehicle for garage. The initial versions that it gave me were too much around the antique cars, even though I'd asked it for sports cars. Uh, but I did like the logos. They looked very interesting. The red and black was a very interesting theme. And so I specifically asked it to give me muscle cars. And so it generated these logos that you're seeing right now. For, for the website, I specifically asked it to create a website for an antique uh, garage and so it created these very interesting um, website designs uh, some of them are a little bit old school it reminds me of designing websites in the early 2000s but overall you can see how your creative process can be um, amplified um, accelerated or augmented by all this for most artists, I know that a lot of the challenge is how this can be perceived as, you know, cheapening your work or maybe reducing on the creative process. But I think that this creates an interesting opportunity for artists to be more creative, um, to be to be able to iterate faster and prototype faster and develop ideas faster. The analogy that I like to give is that back in the day when digital art and computer art had come out. Many traditional artists shunned computer and digital art and they basically said that it made things too easy, that it was cheating, that these were not real artists. But now, if you look at the majority of work that's coming out, it's digital art and it has a lot of value. Um, it has very high market dynamics and it's used in very interesting and very creative ways. So I think that it's really important for artists to explore ways in which they, they can integrate this. We obviously will not go into the moral dynamics of how these AI models are being trained on art and design styles that have been taken from different artists. That's a completely different dilemma. And I hope that one day I'll get to when I've done a little bit more research and dived a little bit deeper. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching this really long video. Um, I really hope it was helpful in some way and see you in the next one.